Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, back here with some more um, quick news. Uh, NATO has just announced that it's going to be uh, raising these troops levels up from uh, 40,000 to 300,000. So things are getting, again, more crazy. Um, they're doing even more to provoke Russia into this war, man. That he, You know, and these guys are just is crazy, man. NATO, I don't know, man. For anybody that doesn't know, I am anti-NATO. I am anti-war. Um, you know what I'm saying? They, they've been provoking Russia from like for far too long, bro. Like Putin, he, I can say, I don't know if Putin is a good or a bad guy. Like I said, I haven't been to Russia. I haven't been in the Kremlin, sat at the long table with Putin, you know, never talked to the man a day in my life, but the man was provoked into this situation, man. And it's just, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and they, they, they're going and increasing their troop levels and. I heard that they might be doing it in a couple more months. Like I told people, this conflict goes in, like creep into early nature. They might well just to go ahead and uh, declare World War III, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because they, 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 these NATO, NATO is retarded, bro. Something's wrong with this alliance. Uh, NATO Gen uh, General Secretary Jen Stoltenberg, the clown, I should say. He is a clown to me. I don't like him either. Uh, made the announcement Monday morning in Brussels, adding the stems of dialogue between NATO and Russia is no longer possible. Again, no security guarantees for Russia. Uh, units deployed across eight eastern and southeastern NATO countries to deter Russia. Hostilities will rise in size from 1,000 strong battle groups or brigades, which comprise around 3,000 to 5,000 troops with more war fighting equipment in Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. We will transport a NATO response force and increase the number of our high rating as forces to well over 300,000. The NATO chief said, blah, blah, blah. The NATO response force, which are kept at varying degrees of readiness to mobilize for two days notice to six months. So they got, like I say, up to six months. Like I said, this might increase into nature. It's currently around 40,000 soldiers, sailors, and air personnel. And they um, deployed the F-35s uh, fighter jets to that region. Um, and this is the flight path on the map. And this was tracking. It was going over Romania, Hung uh, Hungary, uh, Moldova. Moldova. <laughs> Try to pronounce these names. Uh, day by day, the situation between NATO and Russia grows worse. Almost as though NATO was trying to find a reason to get into direct war with Russia over the Russian special military operation in Ukraine. So that's crazy. They're trying to find a reason to get into a war with these guys. With Russia, man. I don't, they just keep provoking, man. And that's why I told him. That's why I keep saying that Putin, he was provoked, but he got to do everything he can. He got to get ready for this, this uh, big fight with NATO, man. Uh, China's going to get involved because they recently came out talking about what should NATO do about China. Like, are you guys serious? NATO do about China? What what can NATO do with do with China? Cut that, man. Cut that BS out, man. What can they do with China? NATO do something about China. You could, Man, come on, guys. That, they doing it too far. Trouble is, there is no NATO or U.S. national security interest in Ukraine, which is right. John Mersheimer did come out and say, you know, Ukraine is not in our strategic interest. It is no concern to the U.S. You know what I'm saying? It does Ukraine does not do anything for the U.S., you know what I'm saying, for the American people. So why we're doing all this money spending, sending these weapons and all this? Because, again, they want to get into this, this, this war. So it seems to many observers that NATO is sticking its nose where it doesn't belong and literally trying to start World War III, which is crazy. It's amazing, right? Sad, man. And here we and here we are. You know, I recently heard Zelensky say he wants this war to be over by winter. He don't want to fight no more. He, uh, Zelensky, he's kind of getting tired of it now. He, he's giving, you know what I'm saying? Because Russia's starting to pick up momentum now. They're picking up more areas of Ukraine, uh, somewhere around here. They was it? They just liberated one area. And they they starting to inch like up a little bit more. And so they they encircling most of the Ukrainian army. They keep circling these guys and taking more land. Again, the Ukrainian armies have to retreat. It just get it just keeps getting crazy. But like I said, he wanted to um, Zelensky wanted to end. He wants to end this thing by the by winter. He don't want his guys fighting in the winter against the Russians. Um, but again, we have been bought and paid for. You can't do that. It's like him standing in front of a bunch of mafias, right? The mafia guys is looking, you know, one guy's looking at all the other monsters and like, <laughs> and they all, you know what I'm saying? They're quiet at first and all of a sudden they just start busting out laughing at him like, <laughs> can you believe this guy? <laughs> he wants to stop fighting that, you know, in the winter. <laughs> He's really funny. <laughs> he should be a comedian. 
And that's what they're doing now. You've been bought and paid for. We own you. You do as we say. If you don't do as we say, we're going to make you perform a Houdini trick and you're going to disappear. That's what's going to happen. Hey, that's all they do. They're going to threaten the family. You know how that, you know how that goes. And that's what they're going to do to him. Zelensky is not really in control of Ukraine. For anybody that keeps walking around thinking that he's the man that controls Ukraine, he's not. He has been bought and paid for. He is the front man. He is the puppet. And there's somebody behind him that has the, that their puppeteer. They get, they're pulling all the strings. You do as we say. Or else. And that's what they're telling us, man. Yo, you, you ain't stop fighting. Man, we need this to go on for the next 10 years to 20 years. That's what they tell him. Stop where? Stop in the winter? You serious? <laughs> Come on, man. You say you got to be. You got to be joking. You cracking jokes over here, man. You make me laugh too. I'm, bre- I'm breaking ribs, right? I'm breaking ribs. Okay, let's jump on to the next story. I want to keep you guys here too long. I say you some, got some quick news. Uh, but yeah, what Putin's doing on the other side, right? In Russia, he's, he's, he's starting to build up. He's, he, he got the Sarmat 2 missiles in mass production right now. So, so Putin sees what's about to go down. He's ready. He's arming up. And he's ready to get it in, you know. They provoked it. They provoked Russia. They want to they go to war with Russia, man. This is what this pretty much is. Everybody heads in the sand. Nobody's paying attention to this. I know it's a Roe versus Wade thing. The women's, you know, got that going on. I understand that. It's frustrating. But, you know what I'm saying? Here we are in the U.S., like I said, heads in the sand. We worrying about award shows, Grammys, BET awards, and celebrities. And we worrying about stuff. That is just nonsense. At the end of the day, that ain't that ain't gonna do nothing for us. Like I say, that that BET award or that grant may look good in that display that display case, but again, it ain't gonna do nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? You might gotta bug out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's gonna look good, but hey, what can it really do for you at the end of the day? So we gotta get out of the nonsense, man. That's where we at. We gotta get out of this. But like I say, um, you know, this man about to get to do another test. He's uh great to do another test. He's mass producing the Sarmat 2 intercontinental ballistic missiles. It's getting serious, man. I keep telling people this if this thing creeps over into next year, bro, we they might would declare it. Declare World War Three. Like I said, it's gonna be on combat duty by the end of 2022. So what that, that tells you? Putin is getting ready, man. He has to get ready to, to, to go to take NATO on. And China if China's gonna come back and China's gonna send maybe, hey, they might match him one for what? Hey, we might send about four hundred some thousand troops over there. Cause we been y'all y'all been threatening us over with Taiwan, right? Y'all say y'all want to go to war with us over Taiwan, right? Y'all been saying y'all see your little think tanks and all that. Russia, hey, hey, China may say we want a piece of this, man. Get North Korea in this too. Belarus, hey, hey, Belarus, don't say nothing. Be quiet. <laughs> they don't know what's about to happen. Be quiet. Putin tell everybody. Putin already told Belarus he finna give him a couple nuclear weapons. Hey, don't say nothing. Don't hey, don't say nothing. That was Putin telling them. Just wait, just hold off. Wait, wait, we got him. <laughs> Let him go over though. These, these people crazy, bro. Something wrong with these people. We're dealing with a, 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 a administration that has lost its mind. They don't know what to do. Biden is surrounded by a ton of warmongers, you know, disguised as politicians. And this man wakes up most of the time, don't know where he's at, don't know where his left from his right, his right from his left. So bad they got to give him a cue card to get around. Tell him what's to say at a, at a, at a certain time. Where he got to sit at. <laughs> What time to take a drink? <laughs> you know what I'm just all type of crazy. Here's your cue card, Mr. President, because we know you're going to need it. Because we, in case you fall off a bike again, we don't know. We might can't help you out. We'll be over here somewhere. You falling off of bikes and saying all type of stuff. You ain't saying you got to come back and backtrack it. Yeah, he ain't mean to say that. Yeah, man. Damn. Somebody, hey, gay man, somebody don't forgot to give him another cue card. We told him not to say that. And he said it. Who, who, who slept up this time? <laughs> it's ridiculous. But um yeah um multipolar Rista um the CIA and the Western Special Ops and Commanders in Ukraine are directing this proxy war on Russia which is, is a proxy war um sending all this money you like I said you don't send billions of dollars into a country bro it's been bought and paid for land lease what that tells you the American hasn't signed a land lease since the end of World War Two that tells you man they 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 this country bro they they on some destructive type stuff man those is that the proxy war in Ukraine is being directed by the U.S. and other Western allies. This is not, again, a war, a simple battle between Ukraine and Russia. This is a battle between Russia and NATO. This is really a kind of world war. And Ukraine is simply the the site where that war is being waged. And of course, the U.S. has made it clear and NATO has made it clear that they're willing to fight into the last Ukrainian in order to bleed Russia. The defense secretary and former Raytheon lobbyist 
of the United States, Lloyd Austin, said that the U.S. goal is to weaken Russia. Yep, as we have, that's what he, that's what he was talking about. Um, Defense Lord Secretary, I know everyone caught that clip. He's a clown too, works for the military industrial complex. Again, make they make a lot of profits off all his weapons, man, sending all this money that goes missing. <laughs> it just, we're, we're just uh, Defense Secretary Lord Austin. Uh huh. We're going to do everything we can. Uh, Zelensky, you got the hard Mars missile system we sent you? And Zelensky, like, yeah, we we got it, Lloyd. Uh, okay, okay. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Anti tank ballistic missiles? Uh huh. We got it too. Um, before I go, Zelensky, <laughs> you're not by any chance dancing in the hills again, are you? <laughs> no. It's time to stop. <laughs> stop. Okay, but yeah. Uh, big ups to Ben. I'm going to leave a link to his uh, to his video in the video description if anybody wants to check this video out. Um, but yeah, like I said, the CIA was in on this stuff, man. They've they been training these people for so long, bro. They've been getting prepared for this crazy crap. We're going to skip it a little bit, see what Ben's saying some more. Um, probably put it about right there. So, like I say, he's talking about the CIA and the Special Operations Forces from the uh, NATO members, you know, Britain, France, Canada, and Lithuania. They're no physical in Ukraine. They're helping with directing this proxy war on Russia. Ukraine, along <coughs> with Special Operations Forces from numerous NATO members, including Britain, France, Canada, and Lithuania. These forces, these Western forces on the ground in Ukraine are training and advising Ukrainian fighters. They're overseeing weapon shipments and managing intelligence. And again, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars of weapons sent by the West, including from the U.S., at least $50 billion. $50 billion. Why Americans go over here dealing with high inflation, gas prices. High ass food prices, <laughs> everything is high, and we're over there sending billions of dollars to finish proxy war just because we need to get into a war with direct war with Russia. I don't know why. I, I don't know if you guys watched the Duran. I watched Alex. Uh, Alex is pretty cool. Big ups to Alex too. And it was some guy. Who, I think some guy was um, interviewing Alex on some live stream or something like that. And uh, the guy asked him like, "Why do?" The West hate Russians so much. And Alex just literally shot for a second because he said he'd been over in Russia before. He actually lived over there for like two years or something like that. And he said he just don't know. He had a look on his face like, man, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird. He said, I can't can't explain it why they have such a, a huge hate for Russia or for Russian people. I don't get it either. I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it is mind boggling. It is it's really weird. But that's the world we live in, man. People... They just hate him, like Victoria Newland, all these other people, and these the Congress people. They just don't like Russia, bro. They just don't like Russian people. But y'all, y'all again, y'all messing with the people, man. These people don't play around. Russia got a stance, man. Y'all, y'all keep messing with us, man. We we trying to be patient. Y'all just keep provoking us. Y'all keep poking us and poking and poking and poking. You won't stop. You just won't stop. But we got something that can stop you. You keep you keep going on. We got something that can stop you. And like I said, they're gonna keep going on, man. It's just it's sad, man. We're and these people don't really care. When I saw Richard Black explain that already, he explained the whole procedure what these people are gonna do in case of a nuclear war. He was like, bro, and these people are gonna run to their bunkers. He was like, man, but Richard Black had me like, oh my god. I was like, man, he going in on them. in US assistance on the books. This New York Times article also reveals that at least 20 countries are part of a U.S. Army-led coalition that is guiding Ukraine in its fight against the Russian troops. And another explosive detail about this is that some of the Ukrainian fighters even have U.S. flag patches. That is to say, they're using gear, equipment, that has the U.S. flag on it, as if they were U.S. soldiers. <laughs> It tells you everything you need to know, man. The U.S. owns Ukraine, man. It's been bought and paid for. Bought and paid for. Zelensky bought and paid for. U.S. flat patches on their equipment. It's crazy, right? Insane. So again, this is all according to a report in the New York Times, which is a de facto voice of the U.S. government. All right, we're going to go ahead and skip a little bit of this, uh, get Ben in around the last part where he kind of goes in and make a really 
good good comparison to how this this proxy war could be related to the U.S. and how how is it if it was in reverse? It's just it's ridiculous, bro. These people doing. See right here. Let me see. It is oh. training. Go back and put full screen. Went training out. Ukrainian paramilitaries to quote kill Russians. And this article in Yahoo News it pointed out that this operation began in 2015 and this was an operation based in the united states and the article in yahoo news admitted quote the cia is overseeing a secret intensive training program in the u.s for elite ukrainian special operations forces and other intelligence personnel a cia agent admitted quote the united states is training an insurgency again this was a month before Russia invaded Ukraine. And the CIA admitted that its goal is to teach Ukrainian fighters, quote, to kill Russians. <laughs> the CIA and then 2 training these guys, bro. Since 2015 to kill Russians, bro. It's just insane. It's just crazy, bro. And like, it's, it's crazy. Eight years goes on and these people is fighting this damn separatist war. And not one person coming forward and say, you know what? Somebody need to stop this. If we're so much about democracy and freedom and whatever we're supposed to be about, we would have stopped that, right? We would have came in and said, man, y'all got it under those mince accords. Y'all can't be doing this. Y'all doing what? No, 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 no. We don't play that. Y'all got it under no mince accord. But again, we don't care. We just trying to start a damn war with Russia. We don't care who over there. Taliban can be over there, bro. We'll still we'll arm you guys to fight them. We don't care. Again, here here's the quote directly from the Yahoo News article published a month. All right, let me see. I think he had did another comparison. Let me try to get to it real quick. I can get off this video with you guys. I don't want to keep you guys here too long. But uh, Ben's really going. I'm going to leave a link to this video. It's really good. You guys should check it out. Russia orchestrated a violence in this scenario. And I noted in this article that to understand Moscow's perspective and what's happening in Ukraine, Imagine this scenario. What would the United States do if Russia orchestrated a violent coup d'etat in Mexico, the southern border of the U.S.? This is what the U.S. did in Russia's neighbor, Ukraine, in 2014. And then after this U.S.-backed coup in Mexico, Russian spy agencies spent years and billions of dollars training Mexican gangs to kill North Americans and then sent them to the U.S. border to fight a, quote, insurgency against the U.S. That is what the U.S. has been doing in Ukraine since 2014. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's what they've been doing, ladies and gentlemen. That's what, There you have it. Good job to Ben. Uh, leave a link to his, his video. Also, you guys can check his channel out through the video, of course, the video link. Uh, but, yeah, that's, it's, that's where we at, folks, man. People got to get their heads out the sand, man. It's going down soon. Russia got to do everything they can, man, to, to um, fight against NATO. It's going to be one hell of a devastating um, light show, man, over there in Europe. I feel for the people. It's going to get it's going to get crazy, man. If cooler heads don't come out of this, if no one sits down and tells people to cool, chill out with this, this BS, we're, we're going to be right there at it, man, right there in the forefront of it. Man. People are like, oh, my God, World War III just broke out. Bro, y'all about, about to have some bug out locations, man, because this is going to get heavy, you know? Like I said, all type of things can break out over here, man. We got we got an open border thing situation going on, border crisis. We don't know who's running up over here in this country right now. You know what I'm saying? We don't know who's plotting on what, who's doing what, who sabotaging what. We, you know what I'm saying? We this is where we at because our government, our administration just don't care. They don't care what happens. Like I said, I don't know what they're trying to do. Either start a war or a civil war. I don't know which way they're trying to go with it now. Either a civil war or do y'all guys want an actual war? Like you guys got to pick. Do you want a war with Russia? Or do you want a civil war in America? Because it seems like you're trying to, you're tater, you're like teetering on both kind of, you know, man. But I guess they really want a war with Russia. And uh, Putin's got to bring it, man. He has to put the Sarmat twos to to test, man. And and he gotta he gotta, you know, since it's gonna be devastating. But that's the way these people wanted to go, man. Bunkers probably won't save you, man. Once them things hit, man, it's gonna be devastating. Uh, so, my guys, take care. Be blessed. Be safe, man. We're living in crazy times. I have never seen nothing like this in my life. Um, I looked down. I got two. I had two recently. Uh, two nieces. They're like one to just turn two, another one soon to be turning two. 
And I just look down in their faces, man. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't know what kind of world they're going to be growing up in, man. It's sad to see that just to, to look down at these kids, man. You know, two years old and you looking like, man, I don't, I just don't know. Just that's, that's the times we at right now. So yeah, man, just stay prayed up, guys. It's going to get crazy. And, um, it ain't going to get no easy for us, but we just got to stay strong through it, man. We were dealing with some corrupted people in this administration, man. And a lot of people, these people came through this government and it wasn't for the American people, man. It was just to, it was just to get themselves rich and, and just keep causing chaos and letting people do run wild and no regular, no, just none. Just like no red lines, which red lines for, for you, but there's no red lines for us. That's, you can't keep going on with that type of junk. You know what I'm saying? They about to be dominated. Russia and um, China's also about to do a, create a new uh, monetary system that's going to destroy the dollar. <laughs> and so, yeah, we're, we're living in good times, y'all. Good times. I am out. Take care, guys. Peace.